What's going on YouTube? My name is Magnus and today I'm not wearing any pants. This time we're doing a very simple sword frog video because the baldric is very swashbuckly three musketeers. This is a little simpler and can be used for multiple time periods. So let's get started. Remember that you can pick up the pattern and artwork for this project on my website, Etsy shop, or my Patreon. Those links are in the description down below. You can also find a whole slew of other Viking, medieval, and fantasy inspired patterns and artwork as well as some modern ones as well, so have a look. Once again, this video is sponsored by Lonsdale Leather. Be sure to check out their website for leather, supplies, and tools. So those are the drive punch sizes that I use on this project. Once you've cut out your pattern and punched all the holes, it's time to measure the scabbard that you want to put your sword frog around. If you want this to be usable on a bunch of different scabbards, make sure you put it on the small one and do all your measurements from that, and then it'll just be a little uh, gappy when you put it on the larger ones, if you know what I mean. So you'll you'll see it here. I'm using a seven and a half ounce Vegetan for this because I'm gonna carve it. You don't need to carve it; you can use something else. I probably would make it uh, the straps at least a little heavier next time. They were all right, but I think at least uh, at least an eight minimum, maybe a nine for those straps. Always sharpen your blade especially right out of the box. Let's cut out your pattern real quick here. This is the dullest strap cutter blade in the history of the planet, but I make it through these straps all right. I should probably replace that, but I haven't bought new ones in a while, so I'm just kinda doing what I can. So we've got our straps cut out. This is a measurement of the O-ring that I use in case you're curious. So that's like, what, an inch and a quarter? For one inch straps, though they do flare on the frog body itself. Obviously same hole punch as before to punch all the holes in the leather. I'm using a number one beveler. I got this from Tandy years ago. I don't think they sell this specific style anymore and it's getting down to a bit of a nub. I need to find a new one real soon. If you guys got a good source for a number one old style tandy beveler i'd love to hear it post that in the comments down below so get through this bevel both sides oh yeah it's time to carve this i don't know i called this a celtic heart i don't really know i kind of just made it up leather carving time wouldn't be a dark horse project without some leather carving we're gonna wet the leather let it dry a bit trace it on with a stylus and after we've got our tracing done we're going to sharpen up a swivel knife. I use a ceramic blade. I always sharpen it, which is really just polishing it a bit to make sure there's no impurities on it. So it glides really nicely through the leather. If you guys have a ceramic blade and you aren't really liking how it feels, try just giving it a little polish with your Jewelers Rouge and Strop and you'll notice a big difference. After we've got all these lines cut, we're gonna do some beveling and backgrounding. I always do my beveling first. All of my little over-unders, anything that I think would be to the background of the project, I'm going to bevel to make it look like it's in the background. So it's, these are all going under, behind these other lines, and then I'm going to bring the piece out by beveling around the whole outside edge. Once you've done all the beveling, you can now go and background the inside parts. You can use... A variety of textured backgrounders. I seem to always use this one because I like how it looks. I have a bunch of different sizes of this specific texture. Uh, you can find the links to that in the description. And uh, I just uh, go through the whole piece, background it, and then I'm going to wet the piece and dye it. I've been experimenting with oiling it and dyeing it or wetting it and dyeing it. So I'm playing around with wetting it this time. I think I'll try oiling it again. I'm trying to get a more even coat through this process, and it's a hit and miss so far, so I'm just going to keep trying. And that even coat is mainly for outside of these backgrounded areas. When you get into the main body of your frog and you're trying to dye it and you're painting around the edge and trying not to get your dye all over the interior parts, it gets a little splotchy, so you end up making it darker and darker and darker and darker, trying to make it streak less and sometimes there just isn't a desired effect that you want. So I'm gonna experiment with oil next time. I'm hoping that'll resist my dye a little bit and even out the coat and make it so I can do 
a lighter die job without all the streaking on my project. So you guys may want to give that a try on some uh, scrap leather before you fly right into your project with it. And then we're going to buff up our pieces and apply some beeswax to the edge. Beeswax isn't the only thing you can use to burnish your edges. I use tokenol or beeswax. Today I'm using beeswax. So give a little bit of beeswax on there and then hit it with your burnisher of choice. My burnisher of choice is this slicker here or my motorized one, which is really awesome. But I need to get some new discs for it so that when I'm burnishing, I'm not always burnishing black because my most of my notches, as you can see, are covered in black. And that's not necessarily what you want all the time. So I want to be able to swap that out. So I just bought this wooden piece and stuck it on my grinder. I'm going to buy like an, a properly manufactured one here soon where I can have a bunch of different wheels set up to be mounted on there so I can do different colors. When you're applying your resist or finish, you can use a very lightly moist sponge with a neutral resiline. I use a spray gun because it's really handy. So I'm spraying terribly here. Like you can, it's splattering. I've got them in a big cluster. If you're spraying stuff, do it one at a time, not all together, so there's a bunch of overspray and splatter on all of them. Here comes the gel. That's enough. No, that's that's about double what you really need, honestly. Once we've got the gel all rubbed into the cracks, we're going to wipe away the excess, and then we're going to give it one last spray with the neutral resiline to give it a finish. After that, we do a quick buff, and then after the buff, it's time to put everything together, so just get your rivets of choice. I like my rivets to be nice and rounded, so I use a rivet setter. You can just take a metal hammer and smash them flat if you want, and it'll, it'll be fine. It'll just, you know, look like a flat rivet. Did you guys appreciate that silence for a little bit? Yeah, I thought so. I really love this Kodiak lace. It's got a really nice feel to it. I don't know, I use it for a lot of stuff. Well, there you have it everybody. A very simple video on how to make a sword frog. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss any of my videos. And until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.